Hello, I'm Dina Whalen, Vicar of Church of the Advocate, and I'm so glad to be with you uh, for this reading of John's Gospel and a meditation on it. So it's uh, the first chapter of John, beginning with the 43rd verse, which was this past Sunday's Gospel. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Nazareth, from, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? And Jesus said, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Can anything good come from Nazareth? I imagine many of us have wondered if anything good could come from the perfect storm made up of the clashes between the truth of the gospel, the integrity of the Constitution, the rigors of science, and the chaos of current events. We might indeed be wondering, can anything good come out of all this? Well, I immediately say yes. And I want, and I know you want, to be part of that good. There is so much uncertainty, and yet there really is so much goodness. A quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. puts it this way, The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. What is God up to here and now? What was God up to in Nazareth? This meditation will take a look. Nazareth is now the largest Arab city uh, in Israel, but as the hometown of Mary and Joseph, it was so small and inconsequential that it's hardly mentioned in any literature except the Gospels. A small village, a region of fishing and farming, if you want to try to picture it as it was in Jesus' day, you can picture a hilly countryside that rises up from a broad basin, a land basin, and in those hills you would find natural caves holding the family livestock with simple homes built around them. Life in this small village, daily life in the homes, in the vineyards, the fields, the caves, is the context for many of Jesus' parables. All the rest of his life, he would carry the name of Nazareth with him. In the Gospels, Jesus of Nazareth is heard on the lips of crowds, angels, demons, and on the cross, where Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, was inscribed. This reading is from the Gospel of John, but he doesn't begin in Nazareth, does he? He lets us in on the big picture first. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory full of grace and truth. That's the big picture. The picture that, yes, we need to hold before us as we look to the good that is promised. Well, then as the beginning of the gospel unfolds, 
the setting zooms us down out of the cosmos and we find ourselves in first century Palestine near the River Jordan. John the Baptist says just after he experiences baptizing Jesus in that river, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The next day, John again says to a couple of his own disciples and their friends when he sees Jesus walking by, look, here's the Lamb of God. And Jesus speaks for the first time in John's gospel when he says, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? And he invites them to come and see. It seems like these disciples of John the Baptist all take his word for it and immediately and enthusiastically follow Jesus and claim excitedly, we have found the Messiah. We know how compelling it is even in the 21st century, to follow the leader and take up his cause. The next day, Philip finds Nathanael and tells him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. And as Philip is saying this, Nathanael, a sincere and devout seeker, thinks of the images that he knows of the Messiah in the Hebrew scriptures, his lineage from King David, his great authority and power, how he would conquer the adversary Rome and bring Israel back to its rightful ownership of the land of the temple of Jerusalem. Maybe all the false messiahs who have come and gone cross Nathanael's mind. And then Philip adds at the end of his sentence, Jesus son of Nazareth, son, son of Joseph from Nazareth. What? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Is what pops out of Nathaniel's mouth. Nazareth, that little crossroads way up north of Jerusalem, near the Sea of Galilee. Well, Philip doesn't debate or argue with Nathaniel. He simply says, come and see. Nathaniel then meets Jesus Jesus recognizes Nathanael as a good Israelite, a true seeker of God. How do you know anything about me? asked Nathanael. Jesus says something to Nathanael that lets Nathanael know that Jesus knows and affirms Nathanael's heart and his intentions. I saw you under the fig tree. The fig tree place of shade and shelter where rabbis and their students could be found studying the Torah. So when Jesus says he saw Nathanael under the fig tree, it means that he knows that Nathanael yearns to recognize the signs of God's promises coming true. He knows Nathanael wants to know more than just knowing the Torah well. He knows that Nathanael dreams of seeing God's kingdom established. So when Jesus invites him to come and see, Nathanael decides this is what he's been waiting for under the fig tree. Jesus invites him to come out, out from the learning and the waiting and the watching. Come and see, be part of God's promises coming true. Now, if you and I step into Nathaniel's place in this story as students who seek the truth about God. What are the fig trees we sit under? For most of any who would be watching this video, the church, the Christian religion, the classes we take, the books we read, are a kind of fig tree that we hope will lead us toward God. We say our prayers in faith, and our yearnings we feel in earnest. We study God's word. We look for God's promises to come true. And we can easily, I must say, confuse the truth when we sit under the fig tree called social media. That vast collection of information and of unknown sources and agendas. 
We are more and more aware these days of how people can be beckoned toward all of those social media come and sees. What are you looking for? asked Jesus. Places of shelter to perpetuate what you think you know? Or are you looking for God's movements among real people in real places just right outside the shade of your fig tree? Nazareth, that forgotten place where nothing much has happened for so long that nothing is expected of it. But it brings forth Jesus. And it tells us that God is acting. God's kingdom is happening all around us in places that we least expect. My fig tree has been the Episcopal Church, and it's been a good shelter. Their study and worship and community have formed me. And yet hindsight shows me that Scripture's words, certain words in Scripture, have nudged and beckoned me all along. From a familiar parable in Matthew chapter 25, which paraphrase basically says that the king, the people ask a king, when did we see you in need and minister to you? And the reply is, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And from Isaiah, a verse that is on the note cards that we use at Church of the Advocate, and certainly one that has called me for a long time, where the prophet says, feed the hungry, help those in trouble, and then your light will shine out from the darkness, and the darkness around will be as bright as noon. When I left the shelter of full-time ministry, both feet planted firmly in parish life, I felt ready to step out there, from there, into the sun, and to trust God, perhaps more than I had been trusting the church so much. I had a wonderful new husband and a marriage to look forward to. And I wondered what part I would ever play in the church. So when the red door of the Church of the Advocate was open and I was invited in to be vicar, I discovered a marvelous space, a threshold, a holding place where the church meets the world, meets its neighbors, where the church, the people who follow the way of Jesus, can step out from under the good fig tree. Jesus honors our prayers and our deep desires for a better world, just like he honored Nathaniel's. And then he invites us to follow him, to step out from the shelters where we wait for God, where we wait for justice, for solutions, for new directions to come to us. Come and see, says Philip. I will lead you to what I found, and you can have it too. Come and see, says Jesus, and you will find greater things than these. Follow me, and you will see those things taking place that up to now you have only hoped for. To end this meditation, I want to share a bit of advice that a friend sent me a few days ago. And that advice is, over the next few days, don't let the donkeys and the elephants let you forget that you belong to the Lamb. Amen.